and Mary Mali. Let's all give them a round of applause. Big round of applause. Very, 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 very powerful film tonight, folks. Very powerful. Thank you. Thank you very much. My first question is to Marcus and to Kenya. How did you guys connect to make this project happen? <laughs> um, actually, it was, it was my agent who put me in touch with Aaron Sampson. And um, I came in for a meeting just to get familiar. And she talked to me about this project, Blood Brothers. And at that time, I didn't know that there was a real friendship. And I didn't know how deep the friendship was. Uh, I was very familiar with Malcolm X. I was very familiar with Ali, of course. But I didn't really know that there was a friendship. So there was, there was definitely a little bit of some discovery there for me. Um, and then I came back kind of with a, a POV and a perspective on how I was going to tell the story and pitch that in front of Kenya. Um, alongside Jonathan Chin as well, and it was kind of off to the races after that. Kenya? Um, Jonathan Chin, is he, or is he here? Right. Jonathan? Can you stand up for a second, Jonathan? <laughs> um, Jonathan uh, brought this amazing book uh, to me, and you know, I read it, and it was, uh, hello? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I mumble, so. <laughs> um, Jonathan brought this amazing book to me, um, and I read it, and it, I caught him, and we talked, and immediately, sort of, it was of the time, and the moment, it just immediately just, we, I felt like I was, it was a gift. Um, and myself and Aaron Sampson, who is one of the executives of my company, we started talking, and we, you know, went in pitched it along with Jonathan to Netflix, um, and we knew that we wanted, we saw this as being something more than a film. We saw this as being sort of a statement of the times, where we're at, where we're going, where we've been, and um, we knew that the filmmaker that, whoever we took, you know, was gonna be the filmmaker was really important. And um, Marcus came in and we had talked to other filmmakers, but no one approached it with the passion, and um, he took a, researcher and a witness position to this and he had you know you could tell that it was moving to him and it became more than just a project and i think people don't understand that about documentary filmmakers um it's not about the money for them you know this is a labor of love and this was something that you know when they take on these projects they have to you know take on everything that comes with them with for very little money and um you know, you could hear it in Marcus's, you know, voice um, that he understood this and wanted to tell this story and fought for it. And, you know, I think Jonathan would agree. We knew immediately that it was, you know, there was only one person to do this. And, you know, and seeing the footage and seeing, you know, you guys coming in and talking so passionately about your fathers, and it was, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm emotional right now. It's just coming because it's been some time stepping back and seeing that. Um, you just did a, bro, you did an amazing, amazing job. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Ilyasa and Mariam, seeing the film for the first time, what, what do you come away with feeling, your reactions? You know, I'm, I'm just very humbled and honored that we have filmmakers that are regenerating this important history. You know, I, I work with young people for 15 years and, we have new babies coming into this world every second. And it's very easy for the past documentaries to get lost for them. And now we're living in a world where they're trying to erase all our history, right? So, you know, thank you, uh, Marcus, Kenya, just everyone involved in this movie. You did a great job. I was very skeptical as his child. I've seen everything on him. And uh, they convinced me they were going to do it justice, and they did. Thank you. Yeah, I remember uh, some of the questions that Marcus was asking me, and I was really surprised and really grateful um, because it seems that my father has continuously been uh, written out of history. And, you know, 55 plus years later, um, my mother often spoke about not taking his work from him because he spent more time away from his family because he loved his people. And he believed 
that America should live up to her promise of liberty and justice for all. And Malcolm is still relevant because Malcolm spoke truth, and we know that truth is timeless. Um, uh, something else that's timeless is the, the term black don't crack. Uh, I kept looking up and I'm like, how? What year was this? Like, it, it, black people are amazing. I, because, because <laughs> it is, I don't know how old y'all are, but it is. 53. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but it was, it was so interesting, Sam, and, you know, hopefully get a chance to get into the whole journey and, you know, the, the notion of this message is so relevant today, mm -hmm. you know, and it personally affected me and, you know, and, and just hearing and looking at Twitter and like looking at things like what people say and how we can sort of make ourselves disparate and disconnected from things just because of a message that people want to send out and, you know, how we can tear each other down and be so derailed. You know, I'm here, happen to be here with my family. Um, and I'm, you know, I don't often get a chance to talk about it publicly, but, you know, there's so many times where it's, you know, I'm there say I'm a colorist because of this and that, or, you know, I'm, I'm doing a show about my family and things like that. And I, no, I don't speak because you're not supposed to like you add fuel to the fire, but it's like, this is my black family, you know, and this is really, this is really who we are, but we will look to separate and tear down anything that we do. And we'll listen to those things and I feel like this is an example of two men, you know what I'm saying, who, you know, had Twitter been around, this would have been, you know, prime Twitter beef, you know, and, and that's, that's what this is. And I feel like it's so, you know, Marcus, you did such a skillful job in showing that, you know, the same problems that sort of how we are being torn apart from each other are still happening now. And I think we just have to come together and support each other at amazing film festivals like this. And, conversations to each other as men and Sam came in and helped you know shepherd this and you know I, I love that Jonathan took a seat back as a white producer as Academy Award winning producer and said you know what I know what I know but I also know what I don't know which I think is one of the most important things you can do in the world you know and I just think that, that this is such a humbling I'm sorry to be ranting but such a humbling experience to be, a, be able to be a part of this and to see you just blossom, man, like you're about to blow up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. One of the things that's so wonderful about the film is you see the humanity and the, and the sensitivity of both men come through. I mean, I love the moment when you're talking, you asked about your father seeing you at the airport, when you see him at the airport at JFK. I love the moment when you're talking about your father, you know, I'm king of the world, Miriam, you know, all those just powerful, powerful moments. But one of the things that's interesting that I want to ask Marcus is, what challenges did you guys face in telling this really sort of complex story, complicated story about these two men, you know, who had this really intense relationship over three years? Yeah, there, there was a, a lot of challenges for us. I mean, firstly, the story is, you know, 50 plus, 55 plus years old. So, you know, how do you tell a story that's compelling, that's intimate and authentic with that much time that has passed? You know, so that's one of the first challenges. But then also, there are so many documentaries about Malcolm X and about Muhammad Ali separately that it's bizarre that we don't know more in depth about this relationship and this friendship. It seems strangely overlooked for something that was so impactful over a three-year period. Um, and so to balance that storytelling was really important for me. Um, you know, these are, these are icons, these are inspirations, they are motivation, they're heroes for so many of us. So to tell an honest story that's balanced between the two men, where we can actually open up about transgressions, about mistakes or missteps, while still celebrating our heroes, I think is incredibly important. And that was a, a big challenge for us to overcome, but I think we got to a place where it all comes together and you can kind of see the complexity of this relationship. Because I think one of the things that's important is this was a really complicated relationship and there were a lot of different factors involved. And it's hard, you can't just point the finger at one person or at one entity because there were so many layers that further complicated the relationship. So I think putting all that forward in a way that people can digest it and understand what were the factors at hand and what was going on at this specific time period 
um, was really important. It was a challenge, but it was really important to, to, to tackle that in this film. Which I think you did extremely, extremely well. Thank you. Eliasa and Marion, you both, you, you know, you both saw the film and you've seen this. What do you think an audience will take away? As, as Marcus has said, there's been so many projects and films, both fiction and nonfiction, about your dad. What do you think audience will take away from this film? I think it'll be a myriad of things. All, everyone perceives things differently, and I think it's based on what's within them. Um, you know, I think you'll have people upset at my dad a little bit. You may have people upset at Malcolm. You have people that may say, which I kind of believe, that it was a larger entity and, you know, the higher ups really used this division to get done what they needed to do because of the threat that Malcolm posed to this country. Um, so I, I think people, but I do believe that it's history that people say, wow, I didn't know that. And, you guys did bring truth. You can't sit, tell all sides, of course, because it's only a documentary, it's not a docu-series. Um, but I do think people will, I mean, you, you, look, you did everything. You looked at their backgrounds and you ended it well. You, 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 you talked about my father's regrets and, and it was just full circle. So as a, as a whole, I think it's just gonna be very educational and entertaining for people. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I hope that we will discover that we are in the same place we were back then. And one thing about my father is he sought solutions. And he was just a young man in his 20s when the world learned of him, and he was 39 when he was gunned down. Twelve short years of his life giving, selfless, and recognizing the humanity in all of us. And my mother said, that her husband loved his people and she loved her husband. So I just, you know, as long as we learn something from this and we see the same goals that we had back then are still here. Yeah. And those who sought to address them are no longer with us. It's, it's so interesting to me because my father was in the Nation of Islam and you know, he would often talk to me about, you know, that Martin's message was a much more easily digestible message for the, you know, the masses. You know, but people in the time, you know, the people didn't fuck with Martin like that. Really, like, you know, if honestly, like, it was Malcolm was of his, for his people in a lot of ways, and then the message becomes deranged and turned around different ways. And, you know, they were both amazing men. And I think that, once again, that was looking at two different men that had a similar goal of wanting to do something for their people, but just the way that people wanted to tell each other their stories differently separated them. And I feel like one thing that I feel like you really did well in this movie is you saw that these were two men who, were, who loved their people massively. Yeah. You know, what Muhammad and what Malcolm did for you know, their, you know, their own careers, the, the, the things that they had to pay to their families, the things that they paid with their, you know, their health, their safety, I feel like that is I think, you know, to myself, I look at it, I'm like, I want to, you know, make sure that I'm, whatever I'm doing and whatever I'm doing as a father, as a filmmaker, as a man, that I'm trying to, you know, walk in those same footsteps. Because I do think that's what it has to be about. You have to put your money where your mouth is, and both of them did. I think one of the things that really comes through also, you know, Marcus is Rachman Ali. You know, I mean, I never saw him come across in such an expressive, emotional way, you know. And talk about that, sitting down with him and talking to him, talking about his brother. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really powerful, powerful interview. Um, after that interview, I was pretty sure about how to tell the story in terms of anchoring the story around him. If you pay attention to the archival material, Rahman Ali is right next to Muhammad yes. Ali his entire life. Yep. Everywhere he went, he was right next to him. He's in between him and Malcolm at certain moments. And so to get to an authentic story and to ground it in something that we all know is real and tangible, I felt like we needed to be able to rely on that. And we got this amazing interview. Um, he's very warm, he's very real, but I think what the real takeaway is, he displays a range of emotions mm -hmm. towards Malcolm and yes, towards the story. 
And that, to me, is the most important. He's had several strokes, so it's very difficult for him to communicate. But for that reason, he chooses his words very specifically, and he uses words that mean something. And I think that really resonates, and it's really powerful, because he's the closest thing we have today to Muhammad Ali, and to know how real that relationship actually was. So at every moment that we're telling the story, even though it might be difficult to understand him, we cut to him to, we, we get the cosign every time. What, what did Rachman say? Oh, he was there? Oh, okay, we're moving on. You know what I mean? Like, that helps to ground the story. Um, and I think it's really powerful, you know, for moments that he might have been overlooked in history. Um, this is a moment where he can really share his experience in this relationship and help us all kind of understand what the nature of this relationship really was about. That's great. You know, one of the, one of the most other powerful moments in the film is when, after the assassination, I'm always curious, who's that brother who's saying, if Malcolm dies, somebody else is going to die? I mean, it was just like, oh, wow. That's actually, um, that, uh, I'm not sure who the gentleman is, but that's from Gene Simpson, who was um, reporting that day right. um, during the assassination right after he immediately started recording. And so Jason Perez, producer on the project, reached out to his next of kin, his daughter, who still manages those tapes. He had all of these um, on-site interviews from the day of the assassination. And so that, what, that clip is part of that material um, from one of the people who was close to Malcolm that day, on, I believe, on his security team. Well, you know, when you say that, you know, people don't know this story, I mean, I, I, you know, I grew up in the 60s and I never knew this story either about the relationship between Ollie and Malcolm, you know, I used to remember seeing, listening to Malcolm's The Battle of the Bullet, right. you know, and right. seeing Ali on television and stuff, so I never knew this story, so this was a real eye-opener for me, a real yeah. eye-opener, and, and, I, and I hope that people will see how important these two men were, yeah. you know, and, and, and how they are still so important today, absolutely. iconic, absolutely. absolutely iconic, and it's interesting at the end of the film how you talk about how the history has been altered with Ali. And Malcolm, and Malcolm in America. It's always amazing how America cleans stuff up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I, I think that it's really interesting. They said there's a saying that a, a lie will travel around the world two times before the truth can get out of bed. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing that I got from this film is, you know, I grew up with X, you know, seeing the X, having X hats and things like that thing, and I and you kept telling me things I hadn't heard before. And you kept and I felt like it was doing it through it felt very earnest and it felt very honest, you know. And I, I feel like this, this to me, was a process. And Sam, you can, you know, speak on this. Anytime you do art, it's a collaborative process. You know, what I'm saying it's personal, but I feel like you have to sort of be in touch with something. And this, in terms of telling a story, we had the hardest time. And Marcus, you did such an amazing job of, you know, these are people who have legacies and families. You know, what I'm saying, and you know, we're sitting right here and to talk to the world in an honest way about flawed characters, you know what I'm saying, on both sides, and people who were, you know, had things that they wished that they, you know, they had done differently or regretted, but to do it in a way that still felt informative and felt, you know, honest, I feel like it was, seeing it here again, I felt like I was watching it all, you know, for the first time. I just want to say one thing when you said flawed characters, and you're so correct, these men, Made, if you look at the trajectory of all of our lives, we all are flawed and we all make mistakes. And these men's mistakes were headlines mm -hmm. right. and their mistakes got them hurt and they put themselves out there. My, you know, he, 22 years old and he, my father told me, and Malcolm said it best, that behavior is from poison. And it was a poison, and they did get on him and say mm -hmm. this and that about Malcolm. And he, he, Malcolm led the biggest mass conversion from the nation to Islam in modern history. He led it, and he got there before any of us did. So when we watch this, we've all made mistakes on our spiritual journeys, on our professional journeys, whatever journey you're on, but theirs was right in the spotlight. That's, and that, at that age, Absolutely. that's hard. At that age. You know, so to make those kind of things. And, and we, you know, we fought. All of us fought on this film. And there were conversations where I would call Marcus and we'd have two and a half hour, supposed to be five minute conversations, and we'd talk for I'm sure. two and a half hours. And, you know, Jonathan and I would almost hang up the phone and have to call each other sure. back, you know. And yeah. Sam, we were like, Sam, can you come in? You know, the, the process, Sam came in to help with this because we were like, we need someone to talk 
to Marcus because Marcus is crazy. <laughs> And, you know, and Jamila, uh, uh, Jamila is, she was uh, one of the executives on this project, and she fought, you know, there was, you know, the idea of, like, people saying, you know, I know what I don't know. There was a moment where Netflix, being the biggest media company in the world, had bought a project that was very much similar to this. And we woke up, and it was, it was a very successful project. Who actually killed Malcolm, Malcolm X? And we were like, we're in the middle of shooting a documentary that has the same exact things. And, and you know, it was very much so a moment where a company and an executive could have said, you know, backed off. And it was, I had never had this happen before. They said, I'm sorry. And they were like, we're sorry. We don't know how this happened. Let us get back to you. You know, we are a big company, a multinational company. And we were like, let's milk this to get more money. <laughs> and, and they gave it, and they literally understood. I've never seen a company do that before. They said, we made a mistake, but we feel like there's something special here. I think people also have to understand, we shot most of the movie in 2019 and early 2020. So we finished filming 99% of the interviews before lockdown. So the entirety of lockdown, we were editing the film and going through what Kenya was just describing. So the world's erupting around us. I'm working on this film thinking, I have to address all of the issues of all of our people ever, because I have Malcolm X and Ali and the world's exploding behind us. So the first cut of this film was three hours long. And Kenya was like, yo, you're tripping, bro. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, it's gotta be three hours. We gotta tell everything, we gotta hit everything. But while that was a challenge, you know, I have to thank you again, not for just putting me here, but for challenging me as a director, as an African-American, as someone trying to tell this story. Kenya challenged me in a way that I have never been challenged before and that I needed and was necessary to get this film where it was. So we really came full circle and amazing experience, but all of those steps were necessary to get to where we got to tonight. I mean, the respect. <laughs> thank, thank you. The respect that he had for you guys' father in telling these stories, the respect that we all had, you know, it was honestly, like I said, the, it, I, it was at a moment every, at every point from Netflix to Sam, who we brought in to, you know, because Sam is, you know, arguably one of the greatest to ever do it, you know what I'm saying? Um, honestly. <laughs> but the respect of telling this story the right way, you know, and having Jamila and Zana and, and the idea of saying, like, we're going to push and we're going to do this right and we're going to, you know, we'll miss this deadline. You know, and Jonathan, who it's, who's been there in the, you know, at the Academy where said, like, I know that this is not right. Let's keep pushing to do this. And I feel like it's hard. You get really attached to things, and you're like, I don't want to cut this. I don't want to do this. That's just the way I see it. And I feel like the respect that I got for you, you know, the idea of you got beat up. <laughs> you, you got beat up, and, and everybody doesn't you know, get back up. You know? And you got back up and, and won the fight. You know, so great job, man. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Well, my question is to Elias and to Mary. When, when Marcus reached out to you, were you skeptical? Like, I know you've been asked many times I to be involved. I said no, 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> Jason persisted. Jason Perez. <laughs> Jason Perez. <laughs> was relentless. I've relentless. had so many documentaries about my father, I'm just exhausted. I'm like, y'all do this, I, you know. Half the time I just forward it to my sisters. I have like eight sisters. I'm like, y'all do this one. <laughs> Jason's like, we're gonna do this right, trust us. I said, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Good, good job. When he reached out to you, he asked, what was your reaction? Um, I know he, you spoke to a couple of people mm -hmm. in, our, in, our, in my team, mm -hmm. and they felt him out and thought. <laughs> but I was really surprised with one question that he asked me, and it was, not until he asked that question did I realize that I could be as free as I wanted. Because I have also, I do a lot of interviews for many people, even you know, young people doing you know, school projects. You know, I'm always wanting to give information because as my mother said, you know, it's, she uh, uh, safeguarded her husband's legacy for such a long time, not so he could be famous, but for the benefit of future generations. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me a question about uh, 
you know, something about the relationship, and I just thought, okay, this brother is, you know, he's, he's serious. Well, I think this is a great opening premiere for this film to be at the Martha Vineyard African American Film Festival. It's fantastic. And I want uh, Jamila and Jonathan and J Jason to stand up because they're part Please. of the team. And Alex Wright as well. Alex Wright, stand up, please. And I want to thank you all for what you've done to make this film come to life. Thank You're, you, Sam. And thank you, really. Sam. Oh, thank couldn't you. Couldn't have done without you, man. Appreciate Be good. it. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody.